Hey, this is Andy. I'm going to be showing you how to remove and replace output tubes on a deluxe reverb chassis and adjust their bias with the TAD Bias Master. So when you approach the chassis, note that the speaker is connected. You always got to have the speaker connected if you're going to turn the amp on with a power amp because it's, it's part of operating the amp and you don't want to have problems with the output section. Uh, you've got preamp tubes over on this side and rectifier tube over here. And then you've got your power tubes, which if you've just been using it, are going to be hot. So you're going to want to put on a glove. So then you take them both out. You've got to spread these spring clips and rotate it in a circle. Pull it up and out. Now, here's, uh, here's what the, the socket and the tube look like on the bottom. A little closer up, there's a keyway and there's a key on the bottom of the tube that are lining up. It's important that that never get broken because if it breaks off, you can insert the tube the wrong way. So you always want to make sure that stays lined up and that's why you're rotating the tube in the socket as it comes out or as you're putting it in. Next, you get your TAD Bias Master. It's a pretty simple device. Uh, it's got four inputs. We're only going to use two of them because we've only got two output tubes. And this switch switches between each one of them or to off. You've got to install these two sockets first. Same deal here. You've got a keyway on the bottom that needs to line up. Rock it in. And then put your tubes back in. Or the new set of tubes if you've got an old set that you're replacing. Okay, so as long as you've got the speaker hooked up and the power hooked up, your next step is to turn the power switch on, which your ind indicator light will come on. Let the tubes warm up. Give them about half a minute. Okay, so once the amp's warmed up, you can turn the standby switch on or off, depending on how you like to think of it. And you'll see the current draw come up on the tube. Uh, tube number one, so whichever this white lead is hooked up to, we're reading now. It doesn't really matter which one it is as long as they're pretty close together. About a milliamp apart is good. Um, so there's tube number one, there's tube number two, so these are pretty, pretty closely matched. They're 0.3 milliamps apart. Uh, to change that, you can turn this control, which is, this is about where it's located on most fender amps. Your amp may or may not have that unless it's a fender uh, or it may be inside the chassis or you may have to change a fixed resistor. But you can see, turn it one way, current draw goes down. Turn it the other way, current draw comes back up. So where to set it? So the Bias Master comes with a chart of various different types of tube amps. This is a fender tube amp. 6V6 tube amp has between 410 and 430 volts. Max dissipation is 14 watts, and it says set the current between 18 and 30. Exactly where you're going to set it is going to be mostly a matter of taste. Uh, I usually tend to like it on the upper side, which runs it towards class A. Not into class A, but towards class A. It's going to be class AB, so we'll leave it at around 28 milliamps. Check again to make sure they're both in the same neighborhood and they're still within a milliamp so that's a pretty well matched set of tubes. Turn the standby back off, the power switch back off, shut down your bias master. Then you've got one more thing to do before if you've taken your chassis out of your amp like this you can put it back in or otherwise you'll be ready to play if you left it in the amp and then that's remove the tubes which are definitely hot now, and the bias master socket. And put the tubes back in. Do the same for the other tube, and you're done.